What's going on everybody? All right, so this is actually a video from my Patreon. Patreon requested it, so if you guys want more content like this, I'm a little less filtered for, on there as well. I'll link it in the description. It's just the same same channel name, but just patreon.com forward slash renovations and repair. Let's get into it. Everything about subcontractors, how I hire them, how I fire them, my best practices, and of course, uh, some of my mistakes, because you know, I make mistakes all the time. So let's get into it. Let's get into subcontractors. I got by popular demand on YouTube and you guys Patreon. This is a requested video. And let's get into my subcontractors, what I do, why I hire them, why I use them, who I uh, use best practices and all that jazz. So let's get into it, why I use them. For me, it's more efficient than W2 employees. Uh, uh, technically, it's less expensive as well, uh, less overhead because subcontractors, you know, there's a job, you give them some, a certain amount of money, the job's done, basically. That's the ideal port. There's no overhead, I don't have to pay them every hour regardless of if there's work or not or find work for them to do stuff like that so for me and especially with workman's comp and everything like that it's it for my business practice and my way of doing work it absolutely is the way to go there is nothing um the stress of not having that overhead for employees is fantastic and i just it just it just it works better for me guys that's it's i don't have we'll get into why you should use w2 employees here in a second but for those reasons i don't have that's not part of my business so it's it's just for me it's cheaper in the long run it's cheaper up front there's not much training involved because you're hiring somebody who's already experienced at what you're hiring them to do and as long as you got the paperwork in 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 line you know you're you're good to go there is something you got, you got to let you know expectations let the subcontractor know what you expect of them you know be clear and concise use communication answer your phone all that kind of stuff but i use subcontractors for me it's less stress uh more profit in my uh pocket and it's it, it works better for me less training all that kind of stuff so it's less time involved for me i don't have to be on site all the time it's less babysitting all that kind of stuff so now let's get into why you should use W-2 employees or full-time employees or why I would as well if I've ever had to do this again. If I had a business where I had to have somebody behind a machine, um, whether it be driving a truck, a skid steer, you know, skid loader all the time, doing dirt work or whatever it is, I would definitely have a W-2 employee because he's there behind, he's doing a job all the time, repetitive. It, that's you, you're not going to find it's not practical nor even i don't know if it's even legal you're going to need that full-time employee to be behind the machine to operate it to that, keep that machine working and making money for your business same thing goes for service work uh there is you know if you have a bunch of service calls i mean and you have multiple like jobs like it's going to be hard and it's going to be a paperwork nightmare and plus you're going to need that guy almost all you know at least 40 hours a week right all the time every day kind of thing and it's recurring small work all the time from different customers or not you know w2 employee just makes the most sense absolutely i would i would not be trying to do a subcontractor like handyman that does all this you know all this work it's, it'd be super you know it's super inconvenient and it's not really efficient to manage that kind of work with a subcontractor because you're always all right what what job was it okay this is what you get paid for like it's you could set up a system but i'm saying having a, a, an hourly employee for that kind of service work I would say it's way to go. It's way more efficient, less stress on you. You you know, it's an hourly, boom, no matter what they, you know, however many hours they work, boom, you pay them. And then you can look at it and see if you charge enough for that, those service jobs for that week. So those are the two ways that I would say I would get back into W-2 employees. Again, if I had somebody behind a machine doing something all the time, making that machine work for me, making my business money, and or if I had a bunch of, if I did service work, just rolling out service jobs, service calls, people like that absolutely employees all the way so all right so let's get into how i hire subs first and foremost any person that you're working with now as far as a subcontractor ask them i that's best way i do it is get referrals from your current subs that you trust if you don't have any then we're going to get into that in a second but most of my subs that i i like and we get along great now i got referred from the other subcontractors that i hire and that's it's been working out fantastic because they see I, how I work, you know, what work we've got going on. So they like me, obviously, they like how I do business. So they want to bring on other people that they've worked with, they like doing business with as well. It helps out everybody. We've had a great, you know, as long as, you know, pricing structures, you know, great. We're going to get into that in a second. But that's the number one way of I find subcontractors is 
I basically get the pool of my current subcontractors and bring them in on board. If it's, you know, I have an electrician who knows a framer, the framers know a painter, you know, the painter knows somebody else, blah, blah, blah. So that's how I do it. They're trusted. They know, they see me, how I work, all that good jazz. And it, that's been working out fine. If I don't do, if I don't have somebody, nobody else knows, then the next thing I do is I go on social media and look at what other people like. I'll have like a, a question like, hey, hiring HVAC. I'll look and see my local area who's asked that question and I'll look who's been recommended and then I'll reach, if they have multiple recommendations, I'll check their social proof, make sure they're actually legit business, they know what they're doing, et cetera, et cetera, and then I'll reach out to them. That's basically how I found my HVAC guy and it's been working out fine. Once I hire an electrician or a HVAC guy or whoever, we'll start out with a smaller job. Um, so that way they can feel me out, I can feel them out and you know we'll dictate payment, ter payment terms. I'll ask them, this is how I usually do it. Most of the time, almost all the time now, it's like, okay, Mr. Subcontractor, um, this is your price. Yes, okay, cool, no problem. I got, pr I don't problem with that price. I'll pay you, say, a third down as a deposit on your first day. Once you show up and start working, I'll give you a third, and then um, progress payments after that, one third, one third. If they want half and half, then once they show up, depending on the job, okay, no problem. I'll give you half. You know, maybe it's you know a huge you know electrical panel or you know furnace or something like that where they have to you know supply a bunch of parts or whatever. No problem whatsoever. But, you know, I don't give deposits before that are on site for that first day. Don't do it. I don't do it. It's just uh, the way I do business now because, again, I'm uh, in a lawsuit because the contractor basically dipped out on me. And he did show up and did like half a day's worth of work. But that's, I don't think I was avoid. I, I don't think I could avoid that at all. But it is what it is. You know, you got to keep, you know, keep them in the loop about payment schedule. They'll have a signed, you know, subcontractor agreement and they'll know exactly what the terms are, what's expected, what's not expected. And the main thing for you is you hire somebody, you've got to be able to be available, not be on site or anything, but I'd say answer your phone. If they have a question, you need to be Johnny on the spot with the answer or find out because you need to take off um, their, you know, you want to keep them efficient. So if homeowners always come out with a subcontractor, oh great, you're here to do electrical. I want 18 more outlets, blah, blah, blah. You know, like you gotta be, you gotta know, and they have to know like, all right, that's not part of the scope of work. I need to call Richard, blah, blah, blah. And then when they call you, you need to answer your phone and you know, nip that in the butt, tell them, yeah, no problem, Hire, change order, all that good stuff. Cause that does happen for sure. And most subcontractors when they're first working with you will have questions because they don't know how you do business and they obviously want to do business with you. So that's how I hire contractors. You know, I go with people I know first, and then if that's not it, then I go with sub or um, social media. And that, I, I haven't had to go to a third part, so that's all I've got for you guys as far as hiring subcontractors. Uh, you know, if you, you know, I guess you could pick up a phone book if there still exist um, and go that route too. So um, subcontractors, I obviously start with a small job and I work way up from there with payment schedules and everything. I do dictate terms with uh, subcontractor agreements and expectations and I answer my phone if they have any problems with that. They have to look the part. They, if they, they show up in a Ford Pinto that's been rusted out and everything and they, they want like $50,000 for something, that's gonna be a hard sell for me. I'm not, you know, I'm not saying no, but they're gonna to have to have some social proof. They're gonna to have to have a reason why, um, if they're such a, you know, huge contractor, they do all the great work, then why don't they look the part? It tells me that they're not, they're a weekend warrior and uh, they have other things in mind kind of thing. So that's just me. They, you, you've got to look the part. If you're going into million dollar subdivisions or big ass houses, you've got to look the part uh, to a certain extent. I'm not saying have nice new trucks or new, anything like that, but you can't, you, you can't go in there and, you know, tie a, tie a ladder to your Ford Pinto and go with bungee cords and stuff like that. That's not, that's not what we're looking for. Maybe somebody else, you know, the handyman, but for me, for my jobs, for my customers, they have to look the part. So red flags, red flags are fantastic. <laughs> um, if they have, now this is tentative because sometimes they always have immediate availability. But if they have immediate availability, like say in the dead of summer for deck building, or something, you know, like it, it's it's a it's a type of red flag. Why don't why don't you have work lined up? What happened to your last guy you're working with? What's going? You know, that's a red flag. If they are like, hey, uh, you know, do you need anything? I got immediate availability. Blah blah. blah. Something either fell through. Some somebody made a mistake, or they didn't plan ahead. So it is now. It's not entirely okay. I've done it before. I'm not gotten burned. Like if they had immediate availability, sweet. I got a kitchen right now. We can get tiled. Blah blah blah. It worked out fine. But it's still a red flag. So. Uh, Obviously, if they want cash or check up front prior to the job site, 
um, or make check made out to them personally. No, I'm not. I mean, I will make a check personally. I've got to have obviously a, a um, 1099 form signed and that's, you know, they're just working for themselves kind of thing. So it is what it is, but that's also a red flag, not giving out cash. You know, it, we're, we're going through the business here. It's not, you know, if they're like, hey, I just want to do cash. Like I had a drywall that I used one time, did it once. I was like, okay, but you know, next time we're going to do, you know, 1099 or whatever. And he still wanted cash, can't work with them anymore. We, we, we moved on. So not doing that. Uh, they obviously, <laughs> if they live paycheck to paycheck, obviously that's a lot, you know, that's a lot of the country, but it's a red flag for me because it means that they're living beyond their means and it, it could be me, it could be bad for me because they could take a bigger project or if they need money, then things might start disappearing off job sites. You know, I, I'll write them a check and I have one subcontractor. It hasn't had a problem yet. Don't get me wrong. It, it's not a problem until it's a problem, right? So, uh, you know, write them a check in like 15, 20 minutes, that, che that check is cash. Like it's every time, like it's cash, boom, done. So I was like, all right, well, I mean, it's not gonna be a problem until it's a problem. But I would prefer if, say, a subcontractor holds my check or deposits it, you know, like just mobile, whatever. Like that's just it tells me they don't need the money, and it gives me a little better warm and fuzzy feeling that things might not be, you know, disappearing off my job site. I don't have that kind of problem because they're not so cash strapped. Because when you're cash strapped and your family's needing stuff, then you're gonna do whatever you need to to support your family, right? So it, it is what it is. But that's that's their choice. So. I'll say if they're paycheck to paycheck, there's going to be a time where that paycheck's not going to come and they need it. So what are they going to do? And I don't want to, I don't want to be there. I don't want them on my job site when that, when that happens. So, uh, obviously another red flag is they don't have any proof of work. So if you guys, and if they don't, I'm like, Hey, do you have insurance or what, what, you know, we have a Facebook page or what? No, I don't take pictures of my work, blah, blah, blah. And of course, if they don't have insurance, then don't hire them. Insurance is a dead 150% not going to get hired. Insurance doesn't cost much like 50, $75 a month. If you can't, if you don't have insurance, you're not working on any of my job sites, period. And that's just the way it is. And if they have no proof of work, I'm not going to hire them. Or if I'll maybe give them a super small job and then we'll fill you out. But no, like, like you got to have some sort of proof of work. I mean, most everybody has proof of work. Um, when I'm not, again, I'm not going to hire you for, you know, we got a bunch of projects. It's it, it, there's so many people out there who needs work who has proof of work. I, it's a day. It's no, I'm sorry. I can't, can't you can't do it. It's, it's just a big red flag for me. So that's basically, um, the subcontractors, how I hire them. What I basically, you know, my best practices, I have a new subcontractor agreement coming out here soon, guys, as soon as the lawyer gets it to me, uh, we'll post it up here soon for you guys to, um, copy and paste and do whatever you need to with it, answer questions about it. But that's how I hire firing people. You know, it, it, it is what it is. And I guess, you know, W2 employees, another thing is like, I mean, you got to have workman's cop, you can get sued, you know, you know, there's a lot of stuff with that. So subcontractors, it's by the job. So I, again, like there's a tile guy, I had him do a job. He couldn't do it. He still requested additional payment. I did pay him, but he was asking about additional work. Uh, I'm done with him because he can't do work and he's still requesting full payment. That's just not happening. So, and again, no, no issues with, you know, false termination with that or anything like that. It's just like, I'm not hiring you for the next job. And I didn't. So that's, that's a lo load of stress off my back. So that's all I've got for this video, guys. If you have any questions, leave it down in the comment or message me and whatever you guys want to do. And we'll see you in the next video.